Hey Toy Collectors! Welcome to another super exciting Outrageous Toy Review. Today we're taking a look at some of the villains from Silverhawks. We're going to start with Monstar. Here we've got Monstar with Sky Shadow. Like the good guy Hawks, the villains also came with their own pet birds of sort. Monstar came with a bat though instead of a bird. With Silverhawks being a sister show to Thundercats, they didn't want to stray too far from a formula that works. We had Earl Hammond voicing the villain again, and this time, once again, a weaker-looking character says some magical incantation to transform into a beefier, bulkier, monster bad guy. Now, I didn't think Monstar looked terrible or pathetic in his first form, but he definitely looks wicked in his big form. I don't know if Rankin Bass insisted on every figure having an action feature, or if Kenner decided to include the action features because the Thundercats LJN line all had battle metal action, but the special feature on Monstar was actually part of his transformation. I know this kind of gives away his action feature a little bit, but I manually set him to his weaker form, the, the feline cat with the strange eye patch. And with the squeeze of his legs, he transforms into Monstar. Monstar of Limbo, give me the might. The muscle, the menace of Monstar! I don't know if Kenner borrowed this action feature from another line, or if they developed it for Monstar, but Bandai would make it famous with the head-flipping Power Rangers. So Monstar's humanoid feline head doesn't really make any sense with this body, but the ability to recreate the transformation is kind of fun. The feline face has some paintwork with the eye patch, his regular eye, his mouth, and then it's molded in the red color of the body, which is his mane. His bulked up monster head has a few paint apps around the eyes, which look nice with the double colors and the yellow teeth. His body is molded in all red plastic. He's got that bulky armor look to him. Of course, when you squeeze his legs, the chest opens up. I do actually find him at flea markets a lot with one or both of the chest plates ripped off, uh, which is a shame. He's got the big musculature, a big bulky armor, lots of angular pieces here. For articulation, Monstar's head can rotate on the peg. His shoulders do not move, but his biceps can twist underneath that. It's not a ball joint, it's a rotation point, but with the angle they're at, it gives you a lot of different poses so he can pound on the silver hawks or put his hands at his side one hand is in a fist the other one is in sort of a karate chop kind of pose i do like that they sculpted on these little jets on the bottom of his elbows they were used to make him propel himself in outer space in the first episode and maybe other times too when he wasn't in the sky runner he's got his bulky underpants down here angular thighs he's got pretty standard uh what i always call the kenner star wars hips but he also has knee articulation. So he's limited, but not terrible. And he's kind of on par, maybe with a Kenner superpowers figure, although his shoulders are different, not really the same as most of those guys. They had more of a twist this way instead of the tilt out to the side. But I think he's decent. Would more articulation be nice? Yeah, but considering the rest of the guys in this line, I think Monstar came out really well. Monstar's sidekick accessory is Sky Shadow. He has a clip on the back here that can be used to attach him to Monstar's arm. And if a hero comes in contact with his face, his wings snap forward to attack the hero with his gripper claws. He's got some pretty decent sculpting on him. No paintwork, of course. Sky Shadow was also released in a larger scale, almost a roleplay scale for kids. But it was always a little confusing to me because they always showed the big Sky Shadow and the big other versions of the birds interacting with the action figures. So I wasn't always sure if they were supposed to be like spaceship versions of them or large scale versions. I, I just could never quite figure that out as a kid. I never had the big ones, but I always thought the marketing was a little bit odd. He does have the ability to clip on Monstar in a couple different ways. I feel like most people display him hanging down from Monstar's arm, and with him being a bat, that kind of makes sense. 
Luckily, Monstar is such a bulky character, the bird doesn't cause him to topple over like many of the heroes. In the Silverhawks cartoon, Monstar is often seen riding Skyrunner, a bionic squid that can fly through space. This was later produced as a vehicle for the line. It is very rare and hard to find. But I thought it was super cool in the show and would love to put one of those in my collection. There's one weird anomaly on this guy. I can't really explain it, but he does have a hole in his back here. But upon looking at other figures on this wave, it seems like everybody has a peg of some sort. So this must have been a universal socket that they built into these figures in case they wanted that for vehicles or accessories or something. It's just weird with it being so low and off-center on Monstar, but of course, with his action feature, they couldn't build it into the center part of his chest like they did on most characters. As with all toy lines, it's important to resell the main characters. There was a Monstar figure planned for a later release that never came out. It was actually Monstar's feline form, so it was more accurate to his pre-transformation self and came with a laser lance type weapon, kind of similar to the weapon Monstar often used while riding in Skyrunner. In the comments down below, let me know who your favorite villain was from the Silverhawks. Thanks for watching this super exciting outrageous tour review. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos.